to our first story from newsmaven.io. Cop fired for posting video complaining about cops enforcing stay-at-home orders. PNAC News from Carlos Miller, who does photography is not a crime. That's what PNAC stands for. The Washington State cop has so far raised more than $200,000. Another cop fired from California has raised $14,000. Now, I'm not saying this is the best way to spend that money, but I am so glad that there is a mechanism now commonly known in practice that people have confidence in through the Internet, different mechanisms, of course, to pool resources to back people up when they are standing up against the government. This is so I want more of this. If it if it comes from a statist hairdresser and a cop, that the new norm of American culture is that we get behind people standing up to the state rather than, you know, libertarian activists, because I, you know, I'm not the only I'm, I don't know, I, I might be the only one as, who's been a long-time libertarian civil disobedience activist at this point who has consistently achieved national media exposure for what I've been doing and achieved major social media following and, and exposure for this, who has consistently gotten support from the movement. And I, maybe Ross Ulbricht would be an exception, but he's got one act of civil disobedience with the, the brilliance of the Silk Road. And I'm Lynn, the patron, Lynn Ulbricht, patron saint of activist mothers, is amazing. And, and, and the move, I'm so grateful the movement has stayed behind him consistently. But now it's like, now normies, I mean, non libertarians, uh, you know, might see a libertarian standing up to the state and not see this through the lens of politics, but see someone standing up to the state. A Washington state police officer who posted a video of himself ranting about how cops in this country are not respecting the constitutional rights of Americans, is about to lose his job for refusing to delete the video. Now, you can go watch this later. We'll put the link in the notes here. Port of Seattle officer Greg Anderson posted the video to his Instagram Tuesday, said his commanding officer told him the following morning he had agreed with everything he said on the video. But as the video began going viral, his commanding officer had a change of heart, ordering him to remove the video from Instagram or face disciplinary action. The commanding officer told him the orders were coming from above. We respect your freedom of speech as long as it doesn't challenge our authority. You heard the saying, if voting changed anything, they'd make it illegal. Now, I appreciate the premise of that statement, if not the defeatism, voting does change things. Voting is through referenda why cannabis is as legal as it is in the United States. And as I will prove right now, it's so legal that it's not even fun to smoke anymore. Unless you're doing it on a podcast talking about a cop who's getting fired for standing up to violations of individuals' rights through other police officers, such as my right to decide what I put in my own body, for example. You see where this is going? Now, maybe in the bigger picture of coronaphobia with the threats of, of more lockdowns extending, maybe the curve is going to come down slower than I had predicted, or at least, and I didn't really make that prediction. I said this was the best case possibility is that, you know, this, this, this fades out over a couple of months. I said that a few weeks ago. That's not really possible now because we're at least where we were then in terms of the momentum of this thing. As, as, as I'm analyzing in this one dynamic, at least, it's going to be with us for at least a few more months similar to what we have now. But I think that's going to actually go longer. I think my, I, can, I can more decisively predict that there's actually more momentum now for a back and forth, for things kind of staying where they are, some places reopening, there are going to be some reclosings. 
And when they do, the enforcement is going to be different. It's going to be harsher. They're going to be better at it. The big however that I get from this story, though, this is a loose thread on the sweater of governments all over the world. A loose thread on the sweater of statism itself. The more the coronaphobia crisis exposes the contradictions, gives we as libertarians, those who have been pulling at this thread for so long, millions more just in America joining us, not only to fight back in civil disobedience, but to pull this thread until the whole damn sweater unravels. Now, I hope that means that statism is the sweater, not the naked person underneath it. But if we have to see the naked person underneath and then get it out of our lives, okay, then may, maybe, that's, maybe that's what happens. I think statism is, statism is the sweater. I, I'm really excited that this this is the black swan we've been waiting for. It might not happen as fast as some of us hope and plan, but we are pulling on the thread. Anderson, who said he has been a cop for 10 years, refused to remove the video and has been placed on administrative leave and said he will be terminated for insubordination, not even... The police union is backing him here. However, Anderson has already racked up more than $215,000 in donations through a GoFundMe drive that was launched just one day ago, which is more than twice the average annual salary for a Port of Seattle police officer. Very nice. Very good, good for you. Good for you, Mr. Anderson. Another cop who was fired for refusing to enforce stay-at-home orders was Jordan Duncan of the Lodi Police Department in California, who has raised just over 14000 in less than 24 hours without the help of a viral video. One quote from Anderson's video we'll share here. I've seen officers nationwide enforcing tyrannical orders against the people, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's the minority of officers, but I'm not sure anymore, because every time I turn on the television, Every time I turn, I look to the internet, I'm seeing people arrested or cited for going to church, for traveling on the roadways, for going surfing, opening their businesses, going to the park with their families, um, or doing nails out of, their, out of their own house, using their own house as a place of business, and having undercover agents go there and arrest them and charge them with, with what? With a crime? I don't, I don't know what crime people are committing by doing nails in their own house, but we're seeing this more and more and more. And uh, we need to start looking at ourselves as officers and thinking, is what I'm doing right? There was a follow-up video in which he said... And I, I said, no, I can't take the video down. Because if you listen to my first video the whole message that I was trying to share with people and impart on them is if you believe in something in your heart, you have to stand by that conviction, even if it costs you everything. We don't get to violate people's constitutional rights because somebody in our chain of command tells us otherwise. It's not how this country works. Now remember, in order for government to continue to exist, as an unethical, coercive institution, it needs an enforcement class. It needs trigger pullers, soldiers, and cops willing to do violence against peaceful people. Now, I would hope that Mr. Anderson here, and I do in some small way feel like Neo speaking to Mr. Anderson, Yes, I know the names are reversed, but Agent Smith here is representative of a major glitch in the Matrix, is he not? Oh yes, and so many others now. I've been saying that 
if there is a singular conspiracy behind all of this, they went too far this time. There's not. This is still more of a feeding frenzy of fear and exploitation where different little conspiracies here and there and even individuals are profiteering off of this crisis. They'll get their money. They'll go to their private sex islands. And they'll, they'll watch the world evolve without them. That's fun. Let them have that. But as a system, they've gone too far. So to Mr. Anderson, thank you for being a part of the thread of the sweater that is unraveling this whole dangerous racket. You, along with the Christians on Easter, the hairdressers, the bartenders, the restaurant owners, the mothers with their children in the parks in civil disobedience. Thank you for joining us libertarians in pulling this sweater to bits. And if not destroying statism once and for all, at least exposing it for the racket that it is in all of its naked, vicious glory.